This is the old Ulster in the hangar at the Prasabon Airport. Belongs to heli maintenance. Usually fairly chuckers with helicopters, but not much here today. The Ulster's a J1A, one of a kind, and was sold to Lord Casey, Governor General of Australia, in 1947. New. For a time, uh, up until 1963, she was owned by Morton Brothers at Nandura in uh, Queensland. And uh, obviously the owner died and it was sold as part of a deceased estate and bought by a maintenance engineer. However, he didn't get around to doing anything about it and back in uh, 1997, I bought it as a, a parts or disassembled. It hadn't flown for the past 30 years. The Oster's covered in a Dactron type material and with a finish that virtually lasts in definitely. It's a minimum of 10 years but could be pushed through to 20. The engine is a um, Second World War time Gypsy Major Series 1, 122 horsepower. At 2400 RPM, exactly the same engine as fitted to the Tiger Moth, inverted inline four cylinder air cooled engine. It's not much to do in a pre flight, but uh, as far as the engine's concerned, check compressions and uh, engine mounts, and in particular the throttle linkages. A very reliable engine with a uh, 1300 hour overhaul life. Propeller is made in Germany, it's a Hoffmann, which uh, was used on the German fighters, or well, that is the Hoffmann propellers were, and um, even our modern day resurrected Spitfires are flying with Hoffmann props. It's a wooden propeller of course. There were problems in getting the aircraft in and out of this hangar because uh, often it was wedged in with helicopters and packing cases. So I've adapted a lifting device, a uh, pallet jack, extended it so that it fits under the wheels and with chocks and lifted off the floor and can, it can go in and out sideways. It's made a big difference. This is the port side of the engine, a couple of uh, fuel pumps there, mechanically operated. It'll run on either, of course, and if it's on the main tank, there's some gravity there as well. It's the oil tank, fuel filter, and uh, the uh, little button down below is the tickler for the carby where you depress the float and uh, use the pumps to flood the carby. Again, there's not much on this side to look at at all. On a pre-flight anyway, but check the oil and engine mounts and uh, the oil levels simply a dipstick. It's a bit hard to see at the moment because I have just filled it with nice fresh oil, but it's just below the three gallon mark. There's plenty there. Two fuel tanks. The main is uh, there, which is partially gravity fed, and uh, that gives about an hour and 30 or hour 40 endurance and the auxiliary tank is bolted up under the belly that gives about uh, 2 hours 20 endurance the Oster's English of course and in England they didn't need much range but out here it would be a dead loss without that auxiliary tank just a basic panel with a turn and bank indicator and no flight instruments dual ignition switches are on the left and uh, it has got dual controls, the rudder pedals are there, and uh, uh, fuel selectors just below in the picture uh, for selecting off and main auxiliary. Carries an ICOM 200 VHF radio, which is just powered by a small onboard battery as the aircraft has no electrics, no starter, 
Yeah, they did have. When I rebuilt it, I, uh, I posted it in Valour, which is a little upmarket to what it was like in the old days. Old as it is, it's a very sweet aeroplane, very stable. Well, it'll fly as though it's on autopilot with no one on the controls. An everlasting design and probably one of the safest designs and aircraft ever built. So there'd be nothing better. This model, the J5A, was the only one built by Oster in England. It was um, configured from the models that had a light combing engine used during the war when gypsy majors were in short supply because they were all taken up for tiger moths and training. And the uh, agents in Australia, Kingsford Smith Aviation, asked Oster to build an airframe or modify an airframe to uh, take the Gypsy Major engine, which there's so many in Australia, having been built for the Tiger Moths at uh, Fisherman's Bend in Melbourne. And this was the first airframe sent out to take that Gypsy Major engine. And uh, they realised then that it had more performance potential, so they redesigned the airframe with a little bit of strengthening to increase the all-up weight to carry an extra passenger. This machine's limited by structure to uh, three persons, one in the back in the dicky seat. So it is an orphan, but it's a bit unique. Now to get this thing mobile, we'll carry out an engine pre-flight, daily, airframe daily, check the fuels and oils, controls. The one thing we've also checked is the engine cylinder compressions. Check the dish uh, switches are off, the throttle is closed, and uh, this has good compression. You can tell by the way the propeller bounces after each one, but there are no problems there, which is a nice change. And uh, it's ready to roll after a fuel check.